was it me or was Andy over there lusting over Apollo just like the rest of us was, child? To my ooh, Apollo Night, let me give you a hug. I say you've been hanging around too many black women, Andy. First of all, second of all, sit your behind down over there lusting <laughs> like the rest of us. <laughs> Apollo, fine as hell, y'all. <laughs> Now he don't need to talk, okay? What he don't need to do is talk. But baby, whoo, I had to watch that thing a couple times. I was like, okay. <laughs> anyway, okay, focusing, 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 y'all. We are on the last episode. No, y'all know how much I love Married to Medicine. This is their season ten reunion final, the finale. This is part three. And we're and we're here, right? We're here. Uh, as Apollo is coming out of the stage, all the girls, all the girls was the lusting, including Andy girl. Heavenly was like, oh, oh shit. <laughs> when, I had to rewind that three or four times when, when Dr. Heavenly was like, oh shit, nah. I say, I know that's right. Toy over there looking, child, just salivating, girl. Just salivating. So as he sits down, Andy's asking Phaedra, why did you invite Apollo? Phaedra's explaining, well, you know, everyone was making jokes about him and asking where he's at. So basically, like Quad, I'm going to make Apollo appear. And so as she's giving her explanation, she brings up how Toy was asking, oh, I'm about to call Apollo where he at, why he didn't come to the birthday party, et cetera, et cetera. You see, a, you see Toya put her head down and start backpedaling. She was like, you know, I wasn't joking. I was just saying, I said, any other time she usually had based on her voice. Now here's the thing. Okay. I don't expect nobody to do nothing crazy on here. Cause Apollo is fresh out the joint. Okay. And we'll talk about that in just a second, but I did notice the shift in demeanor as soon as he got out there. I said, oh, uh-uh, okay, not, not y'all backpedaling. Anyway, all right, so they asked the state of Phaedra and Apollo's relationship. He gets to talking, and I was immediately like, oh, Lord, he don't need to, please don't talk anymore. He was using words like a peck impeccable, topsy-turvy, sir, shut up. You're you're literally just eye candy. We sh 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 we don't need you to say nothing else, okay? Uh uh, don't talk. All right, we all need you to talk, okay? So he says that their relationship has gotten much better than it was before, but he's not allowed in the house, y'all. He said at first we was meeting at Chick Fil A's. I said, what in the world? And he still he can come. He was like, yeah, I can come. I come over all the time. So when he said I come all all the time, I was like, oh, okay. But then he was like, yeah, I come over all the time, but I don't go inside. Okay, so y'all still don't have no good relationship. You not allowed in her house, G girl. That's some old school shit. That's some old school generation type of shit. I know y'all. I used to have a good friend. Her parents was divorced, and her mama would never let her <laughs> never let her daddy come in the house. And I'd be like, friend, why your dad ain't allowed in the house? She was like, my mama won't let him. That's some old school shit. But anyway, y'all get down in the comments if you ever experienced that, or if you have friends that had that same kind of thing. Apollo is married, but quiet as a skept word on the curb is that Apollo was cheating on that on that lady and got another baby on the way. Child ain't no telling with Apollo, okay? And uh Phaedra doesn't is not interested in meeting the new wife and has never met the new wife, which I think is interesting. She probably knows child that ain't gonna last neither. And quiet as it's kept, ain't no telling when that lady started talking to Apollo if it was cleaned up fully you know, in their transition between their divorce. So ain't no telling girl. And again, you get him how you lose him. So if he cheating on you and bringing another baby into the world, quiet as it's kept, he might've been cheating on Phaedra with that lady and Phaedra knew all about it. So anyway, ain't no telling girl. So Annie's asking Apollo, you know, with all of the hoopla, with you going away, how long were you in prison? We found out Apollo was in prison for five and a half years. He ended up going into the shoe gir girl, solitary confinement. Bitch, you got real hood right <laughs> Got bitch, I got real hood rat for about a good 15 20 minutes on married in medicine. I said, Oh, uh uh, bitch, I was clutching my purse. I was like, Girl, what is going on? Girl, I want to hear about doctors, not the pen, girl. Uh uh, and you can see Dr. G in the back. He was looking like, Oh, hell no, nah. I don't know shit about that. He was like, I see why me and Phaedra have never worked out. Child, she tried, she wants thugs. Uh uh, uh okay. It was never going to work, child. They talk about how Apollo was in the same um, place that Joe Judice was, which I have not seen Real Housewives of New Jersey, but I'm contemplating on potentially reviewing that show. 
I'm getting sucked into the Bravo universe, y'all. I really am. Anyway, they were able to see each other. They knew who each other were. And apparently they had crews. Now, y'all, I'm being messy as hell. But we're going to be messy real, just real, real quick. Because I got about six pages of notes. So I got a lot of stuff to talk about. So go ahead and get comfortable, girl. Okay, get comfortable, all right? So... Andy asked, you know, were you cool with Joe and everything? He was like, yeah, I seen Joe. You know, we was like, what up? Or whatever. He was with his crew and I was with mine. I was like, y'all got crews in there? Okay, now, Apollo, you was in there for five and a half years. Now, what you was doing in there? How was you meeting your knees in the prison? Like, I want to (laughs) know. What was what was Apollo doing there for five and a half years, baby? That's a long ass time to be in a prison, child. And not having no uh, uh, companionship. Huh? Oh, uh, uh-uh. and he did. He, he ended up going into the shoe or the hole or whatever for ninety days, almost a hundred days. Child, Apollo, a thug, baby. Uh, uh, uh. Apollo is a thug, and I don't want no parts, but he fine. Okay. Anyway, they bring up the situation with Ty hiding his stuff, and he says that he had just recently met Todd and was talking to him about the whole adverse issue, the adverse response. I, I, I said spell adverse, Apollo. Please spell it. Okay. I just, I was like. Why are we talking about Apollo? I mean, I'm interested in some of the stuff that he talking about. It's real hood rat, okay? It's like, I'm just, I want to hang out with my friends and do hood rat shit. You know, that kind of thing. But just about, just for about 10, 15 minutes. Not for no committed lifestyle or no hood rat shit, baby. Uh-uh. I am not a street girl, okay? I stick to the, to the suburbs and the curbs that I'm used to, okay? Anyway. So we hear about Cecil saying that Dr. G leveled up with Sweet Tea, okay? And that was a try, okay? That was a try. And, you know, Cecil explains himself. And, you know, Kwa says, I feel like uh, T is a better fit for Dr. G, okay? I feel like he's a better fit. You know, she's more impressionable. And Kwa explains herself, you know, T is a younger woman. She doesn't have as much life experience as I do. So, you know, and as any woman who is much younger would have, would be much more impressionable and wouldn't have as much life experience. And that's what this whole conversation is about. But, you know, you know, Letitia, she and her feelings. And the crazy thing about this is that this is the circle of life almost, it feels like. You know what I mean? It's always an older woman that's looking at the younger woman who's looking at her like, girl, all right, now nah, I've been there before. You probably don't want to, you probably don't want to do what I did. I've already been there. But then there's that young girl who's like, no, you don't know me. They always hit you with the, you don't know me. It's always a, you don't know me. Okay. You don't know me. You don't know nothing about me. How can you tell me what's going on? on it's like girl but see that's where wisdom come from you know what i'm saying sometimes it don't take sometimes when wisdom if you got wisdom it don't take you knowing about somebody to know what the hell the situation finna be okay before you even see it coming that's how wisdom works but since she don't have none so she don't know that you know what i mean so everybody looking at her like girl we is grown as hell and your young ass sounds so damn young saying some stupid shit like that but again this is why again hence proving the reason why Dr. G picked you because girl, you don't have <laughs> you don't have a common sense guy gave a billy goat. Okay. Now we get to the four thousand dollar gate, and I'm gonna say that I believe that Dr. G is telling the truth, and I do believe that Phaedra lying about it. I, I think that maybe the the communication or the message got conflated, maybe with her saying, This is where I'm at at four thousand dollars a month. I need you to meet me or uh go higher. But Phaedra wasn't copping to any of that, okay? And I, I still believe Dr. G with that, all right? So Dr. G, he sounded a little nervous, y'all. The demeanor, I'm telling you, as soon as Apollo got on the stage, baby, folks got nervous. I don't know what for. I don't know why. But anyway, so Dr. G was like, listen, Phaedra, this is how it was. You know, I, I was really into you. I was trying to get with you. I had just finished my residencies. I was trying to, you know, study for my board exams and, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, I was trying to make the move, put the moves on y'all and took you out. I was trying to date y'all, trying to be with you. We went out a couple of times and you wasn't even checking for me. You was looking for the balls and shot calls. You wasn't even checking for me. Right. And so I think Phaedra says, can you clarify if we've ever had a romantic moment? He said, no, not in my mind. He said, maybe I should have lied to you and said that, you know, I have $4,000 and maybe you wouldn't have known the difference. Now I said, now hold up. Hold up. 
flag on the play. Now, how can Letitia get all in her feelings with Quad telling her she don't need to be, you don't need to be talking about me because you don't know me like that. You don't know. Eh, 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 eh. And, you know, doing all of that hood rat shit that she be doing. But then you not side-eyeing Dr. G, girl. I would be side-eyeing my nigga if he was saying some shit like this. Maybe I should have lied. You know, I was trying to get with you. I was smitten with you. I was trying to, you know, X, Y, Z with you. Sir, it sounds like he still got some feelings for Phaedra. And you need to be checking into that, girly. Okay? Instead of having all that smoke for Quad, which I'll get to that in just a second. I'm convinced that Dr. G is not over Quad. Okay? And there, there are, and I do believe that these women are jealous that Quad decided to divorce Dr. G. I, I'm convinced at this point. Okay, I know a few of y'all was putting that down in the comment section. I'm convinced at this point. All right. So they, Andy says, "No child, if your maintenance fee was four thousand dollars back in the day in 2002, I wonder what the hell it is now. You know, calculate inflation and the, and the cost of gas and all this other stuff. Baby, it's astronomical. Okay, and um." Again, we sitting here just like, child, why the hell sweet? I'm looking like, why the hell sweet T not looking at Gregory? Like, what the hell going on over there? Okay. So anyway, Apollo jumps in just to clarify the conversation again. I, just, I don't even know why Apollo was really here. Whatever. Maybe to intimidate folks. Maybe to solidify her spot. Maybe I feel like Phaedra reached back to get Apollo to solidify her spot a little bit more and also offer up his stroke. I feel like she they partnered together, right? Not in a romantic way, but was like, listen, you want to get this money? Okay. If you get this money, I will, if you come on this show, talk about your life, I will split you a, a piece of my cut. I feel like that's what happened with Apollo and Phaedra. Okay. So, so Apollo's asking questions to clarify. He says, you know, when me and Phaedra got back together, I said, got back together about what? When did y'all break up? Whoa, 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 whoa. Andy, Andy, pump the brakes. You need to be asking these types of questions as well. Got back together from when? When did y'all break up? What happened? How, wh wh when was this? What were, what was happening? What was, what was going on? Okay. Can y'all, hello? And if you already know in the comments, get in the comments and tell me, because maybe I didn't know nothing about that. Okay. So when he says that him and Phaedra got back together, you know, we had a very similar conversation and she asked me basically, can I meet your expectations? And I said, yeah, I can meet, I can meet her expectations. And then some, I said, oh, can you now? <laughs> oh, can you now? All right. <laughs> Y'all nasty. Y'all is so nasty. Y'all nasty. Y'all is so nasty. Oh, uh -uh, cause, mm -mm. anyway. <laughs> okay, so we get to Dr. Eugene and Toya. I love Dr. Eugene. That, that's a good man, Savannah girl. That's a good man. Okay, so we talk about dating needs of Dr. Eugene and Toya. And um, Dr. Eugene says, listen, I've always been a winner. Okay, and uh, I'm going I'm to I'm do what I got to do to get what it takes. Okay, he says, that's why I can't even lose weight. Right. And that's why it was so hard for me to lose weight because I'm such a winner. I said, I know that's right, Dr. Eugene. Come on, boo. That's boo right there. In the clip, and they at Andy asked Quad, you know, Quad, what do you think? Do you think that, you know, Toya would have ever had a given a shot to Eugene, etc.? And Quad kind of like jokingly talks as if they're still friends. And it was so awkward in that in that second. Because as soon as Quad opened her mouth, baby Eugene and Toya got tight as hell. I don't know if y'all saw that, but they got tight as hell. They was like, uh, what the fuck this bitch finna say? Baby, they got so damn tight, right? And, and Quad was kind of like trying to joke it off and laugh it off. Like, I'm going to be lighthearted about this. But baby, they got tight as hell. The air got tight. It was tight. But anyway, in Quad's story, she was saying they were doing some sort of speed dating. So I guess that's how Toya and Eugene met. Eugene lied to Toya and told her, told her that he was a nurse and not a doctor. And when Toya found out that he was a doctor, she wasn't really interested in him being a nurse, but she, so she pushed him on. But when she found out he was a doctor, that's when she was like, oh, come on over, go, come back over here. And I said, uh, mm, okay. Anyway, so I don't know how they edited this because it seemed almost weird dr eugene says i don't care how y'all what y'all say about how toya talks to me i like this this is who i want to be with i know who she is and it was really sweet like so sometimes i think that we get so caught up in these raggedy ass podcasts that talk about what men want and how men want their their relationships to be and xyz and it's kind of like ah, fuck that shit man 
your nigga gonna want you regardless of whether you got a bonnet on or you don't. Okay, I, I swear he's still gonna want the puss. All right, your nigga gonna want you whether your toenails are chipped or whether you got back rolls and body rolls. Like your nigga still gonna want you. Listen. I told my boyfriend when we first started dating, I was like, I really need to get rid of my rolls. And he was like, mm-mm. He was like, I like to put garlic garlic butter on my rolls. He said, I love my rolls for dinner. I said, I know that's motherfucking right. Like, girl, it's not, these niggas is going to want you regardless, okay? The right one is going to want you. The wrong ones are going to try to tear you down and tell you that something is wrong with you, that you're not cute, that you your body not right or whatever those are the niggas that you need to be fleeing from okay but the ones who accept you for who you are baby the ones who like they rolls with the with a side of, with a side of garlic butter baby come on that's what my boo told me and i said this gonna be my nigga for real okay like that's what you do that's what they do the, they do a whole flashback of what was it they do a whole flashback and somehow we get to the conversation of apollo and phaedra and I don't know what the hell Andy was doing, but he said this a couple times. I guess she was trying to play matchmaker or reunite Apollo and Phaedra, but baby, shut that shit down. Stop that. Stop that shit, I say. Okay, stop that right now. Uh-uh. Okay, no sir. No sirry Bob, okay? He said, oh, Phaedra, it sounded like, you know, had you been with the Married to Medicine girls, your relationship would have lasted. Do y'all think that their relationship would have lasted had Phaedra been on Married to Medicine and not on Real Housewives of Atlanta. First of all, one of them got to be a damn doctor. Ain't none of their asses a doctor, okay? Second of all, girl, do, Apollo just spent five and a half years in the damn prison system. Girl, what is you talking about, Andy? Shut your ass up. Anyway, Apollo says he didn't know that that was in the cards, okay? And um, he thought that when everything went down, it was completely over. Of course you knew it was over. Because I believe your ass was cheating on Phaedra. I'm not even going to hold you, Apollo, please, okay? You fine, but stop talking, all right? Anyway, so mental health check-in. And this was so messy. So fucking messy. I said, now, if you trying to check in on this man mental health, this is not the way to do it, Andy. All right, Dr. G, mental health check-in. You know, you told me backstage that you didn't really want to go backwards with your relationship with Quad. So how are you? You don't know how you're going to feel with being on stage with, Dr. with Quad. So how are you feeling, Dr. G? I said, oh. Oh my God, so messy. Dr. G says, I haven't talked to Quad. You know, we've been in a, a we, we had a toxic relationship. And the way Andy was like, uh-huh, uh-huh, okay, get to the point. Like, he didn't say get to the point, but his uh-huhs, you know how somebody uh-huh you. Like, all right, hurry your ass up, boy. Say say what you saying, okay? Say what you saying over there, all right? Anyway, so um, Quad cut in and was like, yeah, I hear what he's saying, but he decided to sh- sign up on the show. Okay, he knew I was still on this show and he's decided to sign back up. So this is what it is. So fuck that whole mental health shit. Cause guess what? I'm here, nigga. All right, and I've been here. I was here before before you left and after you left, and I'll be here when you leave, boo. Okay, I know that's motherfucking right. So Andy again being messy, he was like, Did you take quads? Or I'm sorry, did you take uh, what is her name? Phaedra's legal advice about getting a prenup. And he said, no, because I have a strong feeling that my wife is going to be a good woman, etc., etc." And he was, everybody was like, well, you know, your." <laughs> and it was like, well, when she said that her favorite part of being engaged, she was getting to your bag. Greg was like, well, I like her bag too, nigga. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Quad, uh, T was like, oh, we in it for the long haul. A quad in the bag. Hmm, I'm not so sure about that. I said, Quad, shut up. Girl, don't say nothing. Girl, that's not. No, no, no. No, no, no. Now, see, when I say you to get with them hoes, I mean, get with them, but not that. Not that. Not that, mama, because now you look dumb. You look thirsty. You look like you're still, like you're hurt over Dr. G. Don't do that. That. Uh, mm-mm. No, that's not what I meant when I said that, okay? Anyway, they show a clip of Dr. G taking out the trash, and Quad was like, praise God. Okay, praise God. I taught him that. I taught him that, okay? Because he wasn't doing it when we was together. Okay, I taught him that. I, I'm glad I could help him improve. You mean to tell me Dr. G in the least isn't even taking out the trash? I feel like that was like programmed in all the boys. They may not clean up their room. They may not clean up their bathroom. They may not clean up the kitchen, but at least they taught to take out the trash. You mean to tell me Dr. G ain't doing a bare minimum of bare minimum? God damn. What the f- hell? Not- Girl. Ooh. Hoo, hoo, hoo. All right. So Andy asked, Quad, did you apologize to Dr. Eugene for calling him Eugenia? She actually gives an apology, but it was very fake to me. He accepts it, but whatever. 
We talk about Hilton Head, South Carolina. Now, I don't understand how we keep talking about Hilton Head, South Carolina, because I thought he got caught cheating at Jackson, Hartford. So I don't know, child. I don't know. I don't know where I don't at, 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 in Atlanta. That's what I thought at the airport. OK, but maybe I I don't know. So they get into the situation with Simone and Jackie and Heavenly. I ain't going to lie to you, Simone, in the confessional. She was like, Heavenly telling people that I plotted against Jackie to, to come at her with the bullshit is the dumbest thing that came out of her dentures, bitch. I hollered. I was like, oh, my God. And I don't see Dr. Heavenly denying that she got dementia. So, bitch, that was even funnier to me. Okay. Now, did y'all notice that Dr. Heavenly was more subdued with Dr. Jackie? She didn't even cuss at her. Now, when Dr. Simone started yelling at her and cussing and saying, I don't give a fuck about how you feel, Dr. Heavenly didn't even say, I don't give a She didn't even say, I don't give a fuck. She said, I don't give a damn either. I said, oh, wait a minute. What's going on? But as soon as T started turning up, Dr. Heavenly flipped that switch and was like, bitch, you can get it if you motherfucking want it. I said, what? What happened? I don't know. Did y'all catch that? Because I was feeling like, okay, what's going on over here? Anyway, um... Yeah, again, the whole Phaedra thing, maybe in the past, if we had worked out with this, had been with this group, maybe our marriage would have worked. Um, child, no, it wouldn't have, okay? <laughs> uh, no, it wouldn't have. Anyway, heavenly button into the conversation with Jackie. And um, yeah, I we already know that Jackie uses heavenly as her mouthpiece. Simone says, you using heavenly, allowing heavenly to speak into our relationship to tell me how you feel is putting a damper on our relationship. Jackie says that it shouldn't girl. What are you, how do you feel like it? What Jackie to me, I'm not even going to go word for word, bar for bar for this, but Jackie is a manipulator, a classic manipulator. And the reason why I know that is because she says, Simone says, I, as soon as I said Hilton Head, I saw it on your face, right? And she said, well, if you saw it on my face, then you, I shouldn't have to have told you. That is classic manipulation. Ma'am, communication goes both ways. You need to be able to open your mouth and talk, how, say how you feel. And for you to allow other people to speak on your behalf, girl, I don't even have time. I don't even feel like getting into this. But what I will say is Dr. Jackie is a master manipulator and she uses people around her to speak for her and become her guard dog so that she can keep up her, you know, good girl, quaint image. Okay. And uh, everyone else can do her dirty work for her. Okay. So we get into men and women roles in marriage. Um, actually I'll, I'll back up just a little bit. Andy asked T how she feels. And she said, you know, I, I've been feeling like I was haze. I'm the butt of all the jokes, et cetera, et cetera. And I just let it out. Did, do I think that T was wrong for cussing Jackie ass out? Absolutely not. I wish that she had read the room and cussed her out in the way that the room required that way. Like I'm meeting you on your, I'm gonna meet you at the level of the room. Cause she went, the level of the room was nice, nasty. T took it to like some Zeus type shit. You know what I'm saying? VH1 Zeus type shit, right? We, yeah. The, the shade of the room was Bravo shade. And T took it to that Zeus level. And it was kind of like, girl, you need to, you need to get on Bravo level. Okay. So if, and now here's the thing. If Jackie took it to Zeus level, then you meet her at Zeus. But you don't take it to Zeus before some, you know what I mean? Y'all get down in the comments and know what I mean. Anyway, or tell me if you know what I mean. All right, men and women in the roles. Kimma asked, they gonna, they are going to swear up and down that this man was joking. I thought it was so funny how Kimma has so much to say throughout the entire season, but when he needs to defend himself, Alicia's doing all the talking, but he's supposed to be the man of the house. I said, God damn it, no. How the hell is Alicia over here? I said, you know what? Never mind. That's how training works. That's how she is your guard dog. So you got her well trained. I said, go ahead, go right on ahead. Cause you mean to tell me that all the bullshit that you said on that goddamn season and your ass is sitting here quiet as a church mouse, but letting Alicia doing all the damn talking, defending your black ass. And you don't got nothing to say. And you sitting up there looking like boo with a goddamn raccoon child. If you, mm, 
But you know what? If Alicia like it, I love a child. And I'm with Toya, baby. I hope Alicia getting what she need because baby Kima ain't got no problem telling everybody what he demands and what he wants. And Alicia asked, well, you know what? I'm satisfied with my husband. I've never complained about his penis size. And Toya was like, well, I, no one's ever asked. I said, bitch, that was not enough, Toya. Listen, you should dug into her ass for that bullshit. I said, ma'am, why so defensive? Because what Toya said ain't warrant all of that. She just said, I hope she getting what she need. And quiet as it's kept, let's re rewind and roll the bean footage, mama. One, you said you was about to divorce that nigga because you was barefoot and pregnant and that motherfucker wasn't helping you do a goddamn thing. He still wanted your ass barefoot in the, in the motherfucking kitchen. And you was finna divorce him while you were pregnant. Do you know how fucked up shit got to be for you to be in one of the most vulnerable states as a goddess creator for you to want to lead that monkey? Okay, <laughs> because the nigga ain't doing shit for you, bitch. Stop playing with us. Don't play with us. We not for play play. Number two, okay, you told him in a confessional that he could go down more. But then you come to us to tell us some bullshit about, oh, um. We're oral, he's an oral surgeon and I'm an oral practitioner and we've seen oral traumas and we don't want to experience that. And so that's why we don't really be going down. But in the confessional, you told him that he could go down on you more. Girl, get out of here, girl. You think we slow, like we was in a slow class, mama, no ma'am, no ma'am. You Heavily giving advice, lying to your partner to make your shit work. Girl, if you got to lie, child, I, <laughs> you already in sad shape, okay? Well, he wants you to, you know, cook and clean and iron and do all this other food. Just, girl, just lie to him and get somebody else to do it. Girl, that's, therein lies the problem, okay? I'm not lying to your ass. I'm not doing all of that. I'm not doing all of that, okay? I'm not lying to you. Nigga, you, I'm not no mattress. I'm not no motherfucking maid. I'm not a motherfucking mule. Shout out to Erica the Narrow TV. I'm not none of them things, okay? I'm a grown ass woman i'm a person with an opinion i bring money into this house i work just as much as you do so you mean to tell me that i you boy kima he met the right one okay we're moving on because i'm not fucking with them I, i'm just not all right so <laughs> oh in the in like in the break part i think that alicia was asking if quad panties was hanging out she was like no girl that's my dress and they were like oh girl i thought it was your JJ." and <laughs> dr eugene was like oh yeah they all up in quiet business because they don't like genitals in their face i said i know that's right y'all uh-uh like i can't live like that boo mm -mm, that's too dry for me anyway they show us the al clifton trip al clifton they show us the al sharpton clip uh black lives do matter okay and um Andy says that this show is so real and it's so real that's why I love this show it's not doctored it's not fake it's none of those things it is very much real life real life scenarios and you learn something as you go man I love Marriage and Medicine and I can't wait for it to come back I'm so sad that it's leaving anyway we talk about the whole over the 10 year span Curtis cheating raggedy tied dusty bum ass talking about he in Dominican Republic all right y'all better watch that shit <laughs> watch that shit because we still ain't asked him and he still ain't told us we see Greg versus Quad talking about something I've been taking care of your ass since the day I met you T, bitch, here is the Yelp review. But again, you think you know so much, okay? You hot in the pants to think you know so much. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And then we see Cecil and Simone, how they talked about that, how they were going to get a divorce. And all the people were like, I know specifically Toya was like, that's 21 years wasted. I do not agree with that. I think that that's 21 years of life lessons. But baby, uh-uh, your life was not wasted. You learned a lot, but it's time to move on. Don't be just staying with somebody just because you don't want to feel like you wasted your life. Like that's not a way, that is not a reason to stay in a marriage at all. And here's a side note that I think about um, Letitia. I feel bad for her because she's boxing herself in and y'all have seen this before. Either you've been in it before. Or you've seen it before. We box yourself into this horrible marriage, this horrible relationship. The shit ain't right. You're not happy because baby, her real self, her real thoughts about Dr. G came out when Dr. Heavenly got a lick it up. So her feeling like Qua was right about some shit. That was her truest truest self okay that was her true self so we get ourselves into these raggedy ass relationships we don't benefit from them but here we are we gotta prove something to the next bitch next door so i'm proving to his ex that i'm gonna keep him because he gonna be my man because i either you know fooled around with him while he was with her and i gotta prove that we gonna stay together or you know i gotta prove to the haters that we gonna make it together so i feel like letitia is boxing herself into this horrible hole 
This nigga controlling. This nigga don't do nothing. He throw up in his face everything that you do. He don't want you to get your hair done. I believe that. But you want to you wanna say that you right. You want to say that y'all lasted. You want to say that you were the special one. I said, girl, you boxing yourself in. This is a very dangerous game to be playing. Very, very dangerous game. Anyway, so... My last thought, I think that the women are actually jealous of Quad because as we look back at all of these relationships, girl, outside of the, with the exception of Toya and Eugene, girl, Simone, <laughs> girl, Jackie, girl, uh-uh. And, I, you know, we don't know what the hell going on down there over there with Heavenly Child. If people say Dr. Damon is allegedly cheating on her, ain't no telling. And Dr. Heavenly so desperate to have a man that she let him do whatever. Okay, so ain't no telling. I don't even want to put them on the scale. But quiet as this cap, Simone been wanting to leave Cecil. And I know she probably looking at him like this grown ass man that I'm taking care of. I want to get rid of him so bad. And I know Jackie want to get rid of Curtis too. But I mean, they hold men so dear. They feel like men are some sort of like God or something. I don't know, child. So I feel like they're looking at Quad like, how dare you frolic your ass up in here without being married or tied down to no nigga. And you looking like you good and doing well. And I'm over here stuck with this motherfucker. How the hell you do that? Nah, I don't like that shit. <laughs> I don't like that shit. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Andy asked Dr. Heavenly and Sweet T, would y'all be able to work things out? Heavenly says, of course. And T was like, no, I don't know about that. And um, baby, that's when Heavenly cussed her ass out. Bitch, you looking for a moment. You gonna get one right now, girl. Just like I'll wear your ass out. Come do it then. Listen, I, I got my money on Heavenly. I ain't gonna lie to you. All right, the girl I already told you she was hungry, child. Heavenly looked like she got a, 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 a fight in her, baby. You might want to sit down. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie to you. Then Heavenly yelling, tell myself, see, Jackie will back me up on this. Jackie, get her ass. Get her ass. I honestly believe Heavenly was not joking. I think that she thought Jackie was really going to stand up for her. I said, girl, <laughs> you are sadly mistaken. Dr. Jackie will watch you burn to a crisp before she help you do anything. Child, bye. Anyway, uh, what else is going on? They bring up the whole sister circle thing. Child, if y'all don't stop running this shit in the ground. If y'all had stayed long enough, you would have seen Quad shouted y'all out. Y'all was so deep off, you know, y'all deep off in y'all feelings, got hurt and left because y'all thought she wasn't. You thought she she should have shouted you out first. Girl, go on with yourself by whatever. They asked who had got work done. Toya says her abs. I said, that makes sense. That makes sense. Because I remember when they went to the dress fitting and Toya's stomach was out. And I was like, come on, abs. And I was like, okay, Toya been working out. Come on, tennis. And I just found out that she had abs done. I said, girl, okay. Anyway, uh, Dr. Heavenly said she got a tummy tuck and a lap band and she's still hungry. That's why I said T might want to leave uh, Heavenly alone. Because listen, <laughs> Heavenly hungry and that bitch mean as hell. She mean and surly, girl. You might want to leave her alone. But anyway, I do think that Dr. G is uh, still, is not over quad. And the reason why I say that is because when he brought up the whole regret situation, he was like, you know, but I have this wonderful wife and my wife is this and my wife is that and my wife is this and my wife is that. It's kind of like, I don't want to deal with that. What Look what I have that's new. It just doesn't seem like he's really resolved those issues internally. I feel like he's just, you know, what is the saying? The quickest way to get over an old flame is to get under a new one or get on top of a new one. I feel like that's what happened with Dr. G. Because he wasn't given any real solid reason as to why he felt like there was regret. And I just, y'all get down in the comments and tell me what you think. But anyway... I am convinced these heifers are je jealous of Quad because they did the closing remarks and they kept talking about how I want, they wanted to hear from Quad. And I'm like, it actually goes both ways. So if you really wanted to hear from Quad, you need to call her as well. But you know what? I, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I'm tired of saying that. It is what it is. So anyway, I can't wait to see the new season. I love this show. Y'all, please get down in the comments and tell me what y'all think about the episode. If there is anything that I miss and you want to chop it up, let me know. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.